When we talk about EMDR, um, we're talking about eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. Essentially, what we're doing is accessing bilateral stimulation, and that can be through eye movement, it can be through tappers. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to achieve the bilateral stimulation, but we're accessing bilateral stimulation to help a client recall a traumatic moment and to reprocess that moment in a way that is much more adaptive for their life. I saw an analogy that unprocessed trauma is a little bit like a note that hasn't been filed away in a place where it can be understood. It's sort of a sticky note that doesn't have a home. And because it doesn't have a home, it can be very triggering no matter what. You know, somebody walks past it, it flutters. It's, it's active. With EMDR, with the eye movement and the reprocessing, we're able to file that sticky note in a way that it can be understood in a way that makes it possible to live a much fuller and happier and adaptive life. So EMDR requires, and there's a, there's a manual, um, EMDR asks the therapist to take the client through eight steps. Um, the eight steps start in the past with doing some memory mapping, and then there's some resourcing and resourcing is a way that the therapist teaches the client to manage some of the really strong emotions that can come up during a processing session or between sessions. They're sort of beautiful ways to help clients remember that they can manage these moments that are pretty difficult. Um, the next step, we choose a target or a touchstone memory, which is where we're going to sort of find the origins of these thoughts that are so difficult. Um, you'll hear people talk about that as the moment where the first layer of tint got put on the lens through which you see the world. We find that touchstone and then we um, start the reprocessing or the desensitization. That's where we start the desensitization um, using an image and a phrase and bilateral stimulation. The next step is the reprocessing, where we take that phrase and we use an adaptive version of that, a positive belief, to help file that memory away in a positive light. After that, we're looking towards the future, and we're trying to make sure that the client can manage any encounters with this stimulus in the future. And one of the coolest things about that future template, which is the last step, is that we can anticipate moments that'll be difficult and the client can learn how to manage that proactively and it, it really builds confidence. You can imagine yourself navigating something that formerly would have been incredibly difficult in a way that feels strong and confident and secure. Again, when I first learned about EMDR, I thought, okay, this is cool. And I wasn't so sure because it sounds a little different. And I was working with a client that had some pretty substantial childhood trauma and repetitive trauma. And we were online. And so I thought, well, okay, we can try. Um, the first session when we used EMDR, the client was pretty tearful in selecting the memory. Um, we had to use some resourcing to make sure that the client was, was comfortable going ahead. In 45 minutes, of bilateral stimulation, of following the process that the EMDR um, handbook describes, um, the client was able to view that moment in a way that didn't cause any distress. So we went from a moment that literally triggered sobs to being able to say, wow, none of that was my fault. And when we checked the next week to make sure that it was still not in any way distressing, um, the client was like, yeah, I can look at that and it's okay. Um, and I think that's the story of EMDR. When we're using EMDR with a client who really fits that modality, they can look on pretty terrible moments and recognize that that moment is in the past and that the moment was a moment that was not in their control. 
and they can look at it as something that no longer has control over the way they feel about themselves in the present. And that's amazing. One of the wonderful things about EMDR as a modality is that the resourcing piece of EMDR is useful for the broadest range of clients imaginable. Um, what resourcing hopes to do for clients is remind them that they can feel calm and secure in their own space um, when they're remembering some moments that are triggering. Um, the resourcing can help clients use visualization and breath work um, to help literally feel clearer in their body, more secure in their body. It is a very, very concrete way to prepare clients to pick up some pretty heavy tools and to face some moments. Um, and they, they feel sort of like they've got what they need to manage that moment, that stressor, that trauma. <laughs> um, the other thing that, well, there are a couple other things. Um, there are techniques within EMDR that draw on the client's present strength, where we can remind a client, we can help them remember how far they've come since a moment that was frightening or tragic. You know, perhaps they witnessed something. We can help them remember the strengths that they've used to get into our office and use those strengths to help make that memory less painful. We also can help clients prepare for a future moment. Um, let's say a client is frightened of a particular medical procedure that they know that they have to have. With future template work and EMDR, we invite a client to visualize that procedure, that encounter in the medical world being successful, uh, being completely and totally successful. And we can allow them to imagine themselves in that moment, advocating for themselves, acting from a sense of confidence and strength. And because the future template asks the client to rehearse that several times, to run a film of that successful moment over and over again, we're allowed to reduce anxiety. So, so even if clients aren't particularly fond of EMDR to process traumatic events, there are aspects of EMDR that work in the future, in the present. You know, it, it's, it's pretty amazing.